is the acting chief justice of the Gambia. This project was organized by the judiciary and funded by Concern Universal with the objectives of building the capacity of all the members of the district tribunals in their dispensation of justice and ensuring that there is quality justice delivery at the grassroots level. Suck underscored the importance of this training, saying members of the tribunal are the first port of call for most Gambians seeking legal redress or settlement of communal dispute. The training sessions therefore focused on the jurisdiction of district tribunals and the laws they apply, notably in matters concerning land, marriage, inheritance, and debt recovery. In addition, the understanding by members of the rules of natural justice and the importance of their application in court proceedings to ensure justice and fair play has been greatly enhanced. The acting chief justice later commended the facilitators for an educative and interactive session and the participants for their determination. The training is expected to go a long way in providing justice delivery in district tribunals across the country. For GHS News, I am Fatou Jassi. Officials of the Senegalo Gambian Boundary Commission have begun a three-day convergence in Banjul. The meeting being attended by government officials from both countries seek to address border demarcation amongst a host of issues concerning Banjul and Dakar. Ibrahim Balde witnessed the opening ceremony and he now reports. I'm afraid uh, we can't bring you that story. We'll now go for our first break. The news continues right after. Energy energizing Gambia. KGI Fashion Shop Standard Chattered House now brings you the very best ladies' lingerie, dress and tops, fashion jewelry, house curtains, ladies' wigs and mesh, ladies' shoes and marching bags, incense, coats and blazers for ladies, and much, much more. Wonderful men's fashion, including men's shirts and trousers. The best prices in town at KGI Fashion Shop. Go to KGI Fashion Shop. Welcome back to the news. Congolese rebel leader Buskun Taganda has turned himself in after fleeing to the U.S. Embassy in Kigali from DR Congo. Rwandan officials have said they will not take part in Taganda's transfer to the International Criminal Court. The former Congolese rebel leader is wanted by the IAC for numerous counts of war crimes. We have details in this CFI report. 
part in the transfer of Taganda to the ICC. He has been wanted by the criminal court since 2006 for war crimes. Bosco Taganda is the subject of two arrest warrants for murder, rape, pillaging, and for enrolling child soldiers. All this in 2002 and 2003 with the Patriotic Forces for the Liberation of Congo in the east of DR Congo. He became a general in the regular DRC army following the peace accord signed with Kinshasa in 2009. Taganda lived in the open for three years before going underground with rebel forces in North Kivu in May 2012. He is also suspected of playing a major role in the current M23 rebel movement. More than 50 people have been killed in a series of bomb attacks on the 10th anniversary of the U.S. invasion in Iraq. And talks are pro progressing between Kurdish rebels and Turkish government to stop the violence that has killed more than 100 people. We have details of this and other stories in this world run up of news. On the 10th anniversary of the U.S. invasion of Iraq, a series of anti-Shiite explosions around Baghdad and throughout the country left at least 50 people dead and more than 170 others injured. At least 15 cars exploded and targeted assassinations were carried out. Nobody claimed the attacks, but Sunni militia groups regularly target the Shiite community, aiming to destabilize the Shiite-dominated government. Elections scheduled for April 20th in two majority Sunni provinces have now been postponed. In Israel, the right-wing cabinet ministers named by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu were voted in at the Knesset on Monday. 68 out of 120 deputies voted for the pro-settler coalition government. Netanyahu said the main priority is the defense and the security of the state and its citizens, citing what he called serious threats from Syria and Iran. With Barack Obama arriving on Wednesday, the Prime Minister repeated that Israel is ready to carry out talks with a Palestinian partner ready to talk in good faith. Talks between the Turkish government and Kurdish rebels are reportedly progressing. This is bringing hope for peace in a conflict that has left more than 45,000 people dead in almost 30 years. A Kurdish delegation just visited PKK party leader Abdullah Ejelan in his high-security island prison for the Kurdish New Year. They said he called PKK fighters to a ceasefire. My statement will be historic, said Ejelan, the PKK founder from Imrali Island. Last Wednesday, PKK rebels released eight Turkish prisoners from their hideout in northern Iraq. <laughs> Officials in Yemen have begun talks crucial to the country's future. The talks are being boycotted by the most radical southern separatist groups. They had called on their followers to observe a day of civil disobedience that was followed in most southern towns. President Hadi commented, any attempt to push a point of view by armed force will fail miserably. Scheduled to last six months, the talks are meant to lead to a new constitution and to elections in February 2014. Nearly 200,000 people greeted Pope Francis at St. Peter's Square in the Vatican City for his inauguration. As we hear in this CFI report, many Catholics are optimistic that Pope Francis will outshine many of his predecessors. People greeted Pope Francis as he swept into a sun-drenched St. Peter's Square in Vatican City, Rome, for his inauguration. I hope he will bring in a new era, especially as far as poor people are concerned and those who have been affected by the crisis. Once again, Pope Francis showed his down-to-earth style. He was wearing less ornate clothes than the previous pope did for his inauguration. And he waded into the crowd of well-wishers, which was a real nightmare for the 3,000 Vatican policemen mobilized for the event. He's a very simple person. He's, uh, he will guide nicely in the church. We know him from back home in Argentina. We know that he is a very simple pope who thinks differently than those who came before him. Pope Francis knelt at the tomb of St. Peter and donned a ring, symbolizing his new papal powers. He also received from his cardinals the pallium, a lambswool strip of cloth that symbolizes the pope's role as a shepherd. 
the Argentine Pope chose the name Francis to honor the saint who was close to the poor and nature. The son of an Italian immigrant railroad worker, Francis has already won.